us a memorandum highlighting the saline points of that analysis. And that's what we're basing our recommendation on. Just retire bond? Correct. I think that's what Mr. Prisco was asking for, if, if he could receive that. Well, I, I, think, I think the confusion, Mr. Duane, if I may, Mr. Chairman, is that there's no document with a title saying rate study that Mr. Prisco has in front of him. What we have is a synopsis of that from the DPW director who's been working with them in modeling based on North Reading's data, suggesting to the town that these are the saline points we need to decide on. I just wanted to clarify the way the vote was taken. We didn't vote to repay back the, the, the two funds. We voted to, to, to set the rates with the $50,000 surplus in the enterprise if, in fact, the water department needed that. But it was, uh, the vote was, we actually voted against repaying uh, the loan in the next three years, and no time limit was set on that. So these rates are based on, uh, the recommendation we made, the 8.96% is based on a 50% surplus for the water department to be used for if there's a deficit in, in next year. We specifically voted against, actually, the action of repaying the loan in the next three years. We voted in favor of paying the loan at some point, but voted against it in the next three years. So I guess I have a question I as a result of that. Just be serious. So where, where does that 50000 if it's not directed to go, it's an enterprise fund that's supposed to be zeroed out. Or does it have to? No, it doesn't have to get zeroed no. out. What will happen is it'll get certified as, re as re it's called retained earnings at enterprise as opposed to free cash. Okay. So it, it doesn't get lost. No, you don't lose lost, it. But it doesn't go into free cash. Right. right. So does someone have a new motion for me to read, or you want me to update the existing motion that I have in hand? Well, yeah, how do you guys want to Somebody's going to make a motion as to. Uh, well, I have the motion. I'm willing to read it, but I need the new rates. I, I mean, he said them pretty quick. I didn't get a chance to write them down, but I'll well, think. I guess is there, a, uh, before we even make a motion, is the consensus of the board to pursue uh, or confirm the recommendation of the uh, water commissioners, or are we still on the 100,000 with some paper? Well, I think there's a difference now from what I've heard. Yes. The right. is that water commission is saying they want a surplus going into the water enterprise not directed to be paid back into the stick or the MBTE fund. I think that's a distinction. Significant distinction. Mr. O'Leary. Right. And, and I appreciate the recommendation and, and I take it just as that as a recommendation and as far as whether it gets paid back later or sooner that's their opinion. Uh, I'm of the mind that when we borrowed the funds to balance the budget for that enterprise account, uh, it was full disclosure and public disclosure that those two funds would be paid back. Uh, so it's my intention to pay it back, and uh, as we had initially disclosed to the public. Uh, and I think, you know, four to five year time frame is reasonable. And again, that can be looked at depending upon how the enterprise fund is doing. And again, that can be adjusted annually. So I, but I think we need a game plan. I think we need to uh, follow through. Uh, we have a recommendation from the Finance Committee, again, which is contrary to what the Water Commission is uh, recommending. Um, and I tend to agree with them. You know, the intention was that these funds would be paid back. Um, rates would be adjusted uh, to allow that to happen. And I think it needs to be done in a reasonable time frame because we are going to have uh, uh, infrastructure uh, projects, capital projects that need to be funded. And that's what the purpose of these two funds for. Um, so it's, and if we need to borrow from them again, the funds are there. So uh, whether we put it into retained earnings or put it back into these other, the Stickney Fund and the ATBE Fund, so be it. Uh, I must have getting a rise out of uh, Abby over here. Mr. Well, Chairman. Where we were. Mr. Chairman, uh, oh, Abby sorry. has a comment, I think.
Tiered rate of 778, 1140, and 1556. Yeah, that's about a 95% collection rate. 95%. Oh, I'm sorry. What did you say? No, I'm on the wrong. I'm on the wrong 1075. Good morning. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I don't think we're opposed to, to, to any capital improvement projects. The problem I think we, we're having here is there's 580,000 in both of those funds combined right now. There's no CIP plan in place. There's no plan to spend that money in the near future. So we already have 580,000 in the bank. To add another 400 and some odd thousand dollars in the bank to sit there until we have a plan in place, when that money can actually, once the 580,000 is a plan for the 580,000 dollars, once we have a plan for the additional 400 and something thousand, or even if it's more than that, if it's five or 600,000 dollars, you can bond out for that over 10 years. I think the purpose of what we're doing is not to have a, an unfair spike this year. We're trying to level off the, fund, uh, the, the rates over the course of the next five to 10 years. You know, you're talking, we've already had 20 some odd, uh, I'm sorry, 13%. And then based on this, well, 18%, we're talking 31%. The way most communities do it is you have a CIP plan, you borrow the money, you borrow the money over the course of when you need it, and you pay it back over the course of 10, 15, 20 years. We do have a capital improvement plan. Yeah, I, you have a capital improvement plan for the water department? Because I asked for it tonight, and I, didn't, and I was told there wasn't one. So can, do you have it that I can see? I don't have it in front of me, but it was then presented. Mark, do we have a CIP plan? The, the question tonight was, do we have a capital improvement plan that takes money from any of the funds? No. When we, when we propose our capital improvement plan, we generally don't propose the funding source. The only... You know, the only item I think we ever proposed was when we constructed the new water treatment plant, that was to be funded from the Stickney Fund because the Stickney Fund settlement kind of went to the need to construct that new water treatment plant. As the capital moves forward, it's, you know, uh, the Finance Committee, the Board of Selectmen, the Water, not so much the Water Commissioners, but those two generally recommend the funding sources for the capital can be funded from water rates, it can be funded from bonding, it can be funded from the reserve funds. Uh, so going forward, you know, it will be it will be uh, determined just where that source of funding would come from. But there's a capital improvement plan. There's a capital, there's a capital, oh, there was a, a water capital plan that was <laughs> submitted with the DPW capital plan back, I, I don't know if it was August or September of last year for uh, for the current fiscal year. I, I'd like to remind you, and you, you may have been, if you had uh, looked at Greg's presentation, he didn't focus on it, but the non-exempt debt for, for water uh, for this year is $450,000. For next year, it's just a tad under $450,000. It drops to a little under $400,000 in fiscal 13. Fiscal 14, it's uh, about $350,000, and it stays that way for a couple of years, and then slowly gets to 2017, gets to $250,000 annual payment for debt service for water projects of the past. Okay, so the, uh, and it stays above $200,000 until we get to fiscal 2022. <coughs> you know, I, I think it's important that we're generating some additional funds that uh, if we're going to do a capital project that uh, or an emergency comes up, those, that money is available, so we don't have to go out and do any further bonding and put further burden, you know, because that's a direct uh, right off the top in terms of operating the water department. Have at it. Before you make the motion, can I make a recommendation? <coughs> Before you add another 9% tax rate to the citizens for this town, 
well, you've just added 13% in your fiscal year. You might want to take a look at the model, a more detailed <coughs> understanding, and, and get, a, get a good idea of what these projections really look like. Okay? And, and something that you can look on a new computer, or something you can study for a little bit before you just add another 9%. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's 18%. 18. Okay. Thank you. They're going from their recommendation of 8%, and Mr. O'Leary made a recommendation to go to make it at 18%. I think this, that, that's, from a citizen's point of view, I think you really need to take another, I mean, is there a rush to do this? Can we wait till the next election meeting to vote on this? So take a look at the models before you make that decision and burden the taxpayers further. This may not be relevant, but I know we're talking about rates, and I, I thought I remembered being at one of the meetings a couple of months ago. We were talking about the fact that we're a water poor town community, but we were going to do an analysis and ensure that what we're paying for rates from Andover was comparable. Probably look at other avenues, like maybe group up with other towns. I mean, has that analysis been done? Have we tried to get some water? The, the contract uh, with Andover uh, ended in March. And it was one we signed an extension through the end of this fiscal year, which made sense. In the meantime, a proposal has been uh, delivered to Andover, mm -hmm. and I don't know how many, uh, if they've got back to us yet. No, they're waiting for their council to get back to them. Okay, so. Are you referring to models staying with Andover, or are we, are we well, we don't have that. We're, we're looking. We're looking at other sources of water, including MWRA. Is that part none of, of that. None of that is going to happen in the next couple of years. True, but I'm trying to be more, you know, forward thinking. Because once you raise the rates, you're not going to come back next year and say we have a surplus. Let's lower the rates. Well, if we do have a surplus next year of of substance above and beyond what's proposed, we certainly can lower the rates. But isn't that something we should have prior to ha to raising the rates? Maybe at least have an avenue or an idea of where we're heading beyond this fiscal uh, year? There's been a fair amount of work done already. We've, we've tried to get, I think it, we've come as far as getting some emergency water connections. Is that correct, Mark? You want to talk about that? Yeah, I would just briefly address the, the Andover situation. We did have an issue with Andover last summer in terms of getting as much water as we wanted. We subsequently applied for a, what's known as an emergency connection to the MWRA, which would allow us, without buying into the MWRA, to be able to draw water from their system. At the same time we started the rate study, we had a different consultant looking at the availability of water from the MWRA without having to lay miles of big water main. Um, and there's two communities adjacent to us that draw from the MWRA, Reading and Wilmington. What it turns out is, uh, while we have an active inter two active interconnections with Wilmington, the way our water system works, our water tanks are slightly higher than their water tanks. So when we open the valves between the two systems, the water wants to flow into Wilmington rather than into North Reading. There are no, then the same situation would exist. We don't have any existing interconnections with Reading, but if we did, on their peak days, they don't get enough water from the MWRA, so they would actually be drawing water back from our system. So for the, in terms of the, the, this rate study where we were looking at a three to five year period, to get a permanent interconnection with MWRA is probably beyond that time frame. So that was, that was kind of, those questions were asked and the rates were done with MWRA connections and then making certain assumptions that say Reading would charge us a bumper fee to, to wield the water through their system. But hydraulically, it just doesn't work that we can't get water from the MWRA system into our system at this time. So unfortunately. And this, excuse my ignorance, but there's no type of damming system where you can kind of keep it level? I mean, you would have to pump from one system to, to the other. But again, there's uh, supply considerations going from the MWRA into Reading, where Reading, on their peak days, they're watching their water tanks drain a little bit, a little bit, a little bit each day, so that they had to throttle back or, or I issue some kind of conservation warnings in Reading. So the possibility of getting it from them is, isn't there. And Wilmington, I, I mean, there would be the possibility possibly of pumping from one system to the next, but that's, 